as a daily content creator and a runner every day you know you got to be one step ahead it's like playing chess That's right, we gotta be a step ahead just to stay organized, stay on the ball, keep everything rolling here on YouTube. So I pre-recorded what you're about to watch before coming out here to Chicago for the wedding. And yes, the wedding is today, so we're gonna uh, cut it short. We're gonna call it here, actually. I'm not gonna do any other filming today, and uh, we will pick it up tomorrow. Enjoy what you're about to watch. I hope you learned something. Let me know about the question of the day once you hear it in the video. See you in the studio. And here we are in the studio. I know a lot of you out there who are especially trail runners, you've been waiting for this comparison video between the Nike trail running shoe lineup of 2019. So here it is for you. And in the last seven days, uh, we've gone up Gray's Peak, Pike's Peak, and today, Mount Beerstadt all 14,000 foot mountains in Colorado, all in three different pairs of shoes today. So I finally feel like I have a good grasp on what's happening with my gait cycle, my foot strike, and just the overall comfort and performance of the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail, the Nike Wild Horse 5, and the Nike Terra Kiger 5, okay? And this is not, I'm not gonna go into too much detail with respect to the uppers, the midsole, outsole. If you wanna learn more about each individual shoe, you can go click on the cards upper right hand corner for those or the end screens at the end of this running vlog. All right, are you ready to dive in? I'm excited. Oh, it's crazy. I'm a little surprised. In fact, keyword surprised. I am a little shocked and I think I'm going a little bit against the grain compared to some other folks out there who I've been listening to and reading about these three shoes. Uh, so let's dive in. And as we dive in, I can't resist. I got to share a few specs. You know the drill. All right. The Nike Terra Kiger, starting from lowest to highest with respect to the drop of these three trail shoes, Nike Terra Kiger 5, four millimeter drop. All right, there you go, four millimeter. Nike Wild Horse 5, eight millimeter drop. Okay, so going up there, you know how I like six to eight. And then Nike Pegasus 36 Trail, 10 millimeter drop. All right, so that's the drop of these three shoes. And for the weight of these three Nike Trail running shoes, we're gonna go from the heaviest down to the lightest. All right, so the Nike Wild Horse 5, we're looking at nine ounces or 257 grams, okay? And then jump into the Nike uh, Terra Kiger 5, we're looking at 8.6 ounces or 244 grams. And then the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail, 8.6 ounces or 244 grams all right so the exact same weight for these two right here and as far as performance and comfort and how i foresee using these three trail shoes moving forward all right so as far as the comfort of the upper i am i'm sticking to my guns i've been saying this for the last six weeks i think the nike wild horse 5 has the best lockdown through the midfoot especially uh, and overall comfort when your foot slides into the cavity of this wild horse five so wild horse five wins the comfort battle with respect to the upper all right as far as the midsole comfort we're going nike pegasus 36 trail yes that cushion there that zoom cushion from nike there's quite a bit of it, quite a bit of it in here. Um, I believe it's a 30 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 20 millimeter in the forefoot. And so that's a lot. And I tell you what, it felt good. In fact, a little side story today on Mount Beerstadt, I started in the Terra Kiger 5s and I switched uh, late in the run, but I did switch. I was yearning for a little more cushion and I found it in the Pegasus 36 Trail, so definitely more comfortable. And before we proceed, I have to just, I almost forgot to mention, these two, the Wild Horse 5 and the Peg 36 Trails, uh, are considered the trainers of the three, and the Terra Kiger 5 is considered the racer. Uh, but guess what? I don't see it. I just don't see it. What is going on here, Nike? All right, and this is where I'm gonna ruffle some feathers, and probably I'm going against the grain against a lot of other people out there, but, these two weigh the same 
and this is a trainer and from what I can tell based on the research I've done and even just okay going to western states out in California I saw people racing in the Terra Kiger 5 it kind of blew me away for a hundred mile race but I don't see it I don't see it it should weigh at least an ounce lighter than what it does and frankly I don't like the four millimeter drop I you, you know for me I like a higher drop for racing shoes um, and we're not going to get into the drop of running shoes right now but that's what I prefer and again I don't find I do not find the upper uh, lockdown very comfortable I it scrunches up and I went true to size and it, it just scrunches up a little bit too much through the toe box even upwards into the eyelet chain and I don't know but call me crazy but even the uh, the stack height in the forefoot like even though there's a rock plate inside this Terra Kiger 5 I'm just not feeling comfortable out on at least out on technical trails maybe on more buffed out trails it would do better but I'm just not seeing it I'm not seeing it and maybe I'm going crazy but help me out if you are a Terra Kiger 5 fan definitely let me know down in the comments I just I had higher expectations. Maybe I should have dropped them down a little bit. And so therefore, in conclusion, how will I be using these three trail running shoes moving forward? Again, I think this is a great commuter, uh, Wild Horse 5. This is a commuter, so if you live near trails, but you have to run on pavement to get to the trails, I think this is perfect. Uh, the outsole is plenty aggressive to do some nice solid trail work, and but it's it's got a nice smooth transition heel to toe uh, for pavement or concrete to get to the trails. And for that Pegasus 36 trail, how will I use it? I, I foresee 10, 15, probably even 20 mile trail runs that don't have a lot of vertical okay I don't see this being a big mountain shoe at all it's more those rolling hills if you live near Denver you know like um, Deer Creek would be a good spot for the Nike Peg a great spot for the Nike Pegasus 36 trail and the the midsole stack height will allow you to run will allow your legs to save a little bit of energy because it is so forgiving through that mid so forgiving I hope I okay I guess one little drawback real quick is durability we will see how durable the peg 36 trail ends up being but that's how I will use this trail shoe moving forward and the Terra Kiger 5 if I was gonna use this shoe in a race I think I wouldn't I don't know if I would go over 10k maybe 10 miler probably not a half marathon I just am not seeing it and again um, and I know it has that zoom air in there, but it's just not feeling comfortable and maybe it's my foot Maybe it's my gait cycle and I hate to disappoint anyone out there But um, that is what I'm sensing after testing all three of these shoes on some pretty aggressive trails in the last week and also less aggressive trails over the last over the last uh, two months So there you have it. Does that sound good? Terra Kiger 5, Wild Horse 5, Peg 36 Trail. And that question of the day, if you have experience with any three of these shoes, or maybe all three of them, let me know what you're sensing. Like, how are you using these, sh these trail running shoes in your rotation uh, of the running shoe stable, as we like to call it? So just share your experience right now. I must say, let's, anyway, I'm just not excited about the Terra Kiger 5, but I'm very excited about the other two. I really am. And so I hope that helps. I know a lot of you are interested in these three shoes. And yes, they are available down below in the description if you want to pick a pair up. But I'm, ah, I, I can't wait to take these two out, especially in the coming summer months. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.